Hi guys, so welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I will be discussing on how to solve problems involving the applications of maxima and minima. So the first step guys in solving the applications of maxima and minima is to illustrate the figure based on your problem. The second step is to make an equation using the conditions in the problem. So you may have two or more equations depending on your problem. And the third step guys is to reduce your equation into a two variable equation it means that you have one variable on your right hand side of your equation you have one variable on the left hand side of your equation then after doing that you have the fourth step is to differentiate with respect to your other variable then to find the maximum and minimum the fifth step is to equate your derivative to zero in that way you can find your critical points your sixth step is to find those critical points and after finding those critical points you need to test for maxima or minima using the second derivative test so if your f double prime of x is actually greater than zero or positive it means that it is concave upward you have a minimum if your f double prime x is negative or less than zero it means that your curve is concaving downward so you have a maximum the last step is to substitute your critical points into your original equation in step 2 so let's try solving sample problems so these problems are taken from the past board exam problem so in the first problem we have a fencing is limited to 20 feet length what is the maximum rectangular area that can be fenced in using two perpendicular corner sides of an existing wall so here guys you have a fencing 20 feet length so let's illustrate the figure so the rectangular area is fenced using two perpendicular corner sides so you have an existing wall which are perpendicular to each other and you have a fencing so the fencing is here so this is our fencing so let's say that this is the length this is the width so the total length of your fencing is limited to 20 feet so you have l second step guys is to make an equation using the conditions on your problem so length plus width is equal to 20 feet now what is the maximum rectangular area so you have the area that is equal to we have length times width now here we can say that width is actually equal to you have 20 minus l so here we can say that we are maximizing the area so we will get the area in terms of one variable here so here we have width is equal to 20 minus l so we can substitute here in our area so area equals we have length so width is 20 minus l so you have here 20L minus L squared. So that's it. We have reduced it into a two variable equation and we're in you have one variable on your left side and you have one variable on your right side. So we can differentiate area since it is the required parameter. So we have the maximum area. So we can differentiate area with respect to length. You have here a is equal to you have 20 l minus l squared we have the derivative of a is equal to you have 20 so this is derivative of length minus you have power formula so 2 l derivative of l so dividing both sides by dl so with respect to l so differential of area with respect to length is equal to you have 20 minus 2L then to maximize or minimize you need to equate your differential to 0 okay you can say the 0 equals you have 20 minus 2L therefore based on this you can say that L is equal to so 20 divided by 2 so that is 10 so in here guys you are given a one value only so no need for testing so if you are given Two critical points in here we have only have one critical point so no need to test guys so testing for maxima and minima depends on your situation if you're only given one critical point no need to test 
But if you're given two critical points, two or more critical points, it means that you need to test for maxima and minima. We have here length is 10, therefore your width is also 10. So you have here width is equal to, you have 20 minus L. So width equals so 20 minus 10. So the width is 10. Therefore, what is the maximum area? So area is length times width. So your maximum length and width is 10. So you have here 10 times 10 feet. So you have 10 feet times 10 feet. So you have 100 square feet. So this is your maximum area. Step by step lang yung pag solve. So first step is to illustrate. Second step, make an equation using those conditions in the problem. Third step is to make your equation a two variable. It means that you have one variable on the left side, you have one variable on the right side. So don't forget that if you're maximizing a certain variable, do not remove it from your equation. So here, you have here one variable left, one variable on the right. Then find the derivative and equate to zero to maximize. Find the critical points, then go back to your original equations so next problem we have here determine the diameter of a closed cylindrical tank having a volume of 11.5 cubic meters to obtain the minimum surface area so we have a cylinder so this is closed it means that you have this So the surface area of the cylinder is composed of, you have two circles and one rectangle. So two circles, top and bottom, and the rectangle, if this is your diameter, and this is your height, you can form a figure like this, if you cut this in the middle, so you have this figure. Now this is your height, so this will be a circumference so this is pi d so you have the area that is equal to you have two times circle so pi d squared over four plus you have this area of the rectangle so that is length times width so the area is equal to so you have pi d squared over two plus you have the length so ang length natin guys is you have the height and you have this width that is pi d. Then the volume is we have area of the base, so that is pi d squared over 4 times height. Now we have here two equations with three unknowns. So we need to reduce that into a two variable equation. So step three na yun. And say that the area is equal to you have pi d squared over 2 plus pi dh but your volume that is equal to pi d squared over 4 times height therefore from this equation you can say that height is equal to you have 4 v over pi d squared then we need to substitute this into our other equation to reduce it into a two variable equation so area that is equal to you have pi d squared over 2 plus have your pi d. So height is you have 4v over pi d squared. So simplify you have a equals so you have pi d squared over 2 plus here we can cancel this out. So pi cancel so d. So 4v over D. So you have here, but V is equal to 11.5 cubic meters. So we have a two variable equation. So further simplifying, you have A equals so pi D squared over 2 plus 4 V D raised to negative 1. Perhaps you can substitute B. So V is equal to 11.5. 
So this is d raised to negative 1. So that is the law of exponent. So differential of a is equal to, you have here power formula. So that is pi over 2. So here, that is 2. d raised to 2 minus 1, that is 1. So derivative of d. Plus, you can reduce this. So 4 times 11.5, you have here 46. So power formula, so this is negative 1. Bring down your exponent. So you have d raised to negative 1 minus 1, so that is negative 2. So derivative of d. Then we can uh, differentiate with respect to d. So divide both sides by derivative of d. So you have differential of a with respect to your diameter is equal to, we have, we can simplify this out, that is pi d. We have pi d minus, you have 46. So, over d squared. So, you bring that down again. So, in order to maximize or minimize, you let your differential of a with respect to diameter to 0. You have this pi d minus 46 over d squared equals 0. Then, we extract d. So, multiply d squared to both sides. So, you have your pi. So, d d times d squared so that is d cubed so that is pi d cubed minus we have 46 equals 0 so we have d cubed equals we have 46 over pi so d equals we have 46 over pi raised to one third so we need to cancel that exponent 3 so you raise both sides by one third so we have d equals this is the final answer we have here 2.446 so the unit of that is you have meters so in this next problem guys we have a box is to be constructed from a piece of cardboard 20 square inch by cutting equal squares from each corner and turning up the cardboard from the side what is the volume of the largest box that can be constructed so first step illustrate the figure so we have here a cardboard. So the box is constructed by cutting equal square from each corner. So you have this squares. Let's say that each side of this square is, let's say, x. So each side is 20 inches. So you have here 20 inches now if you turn this up so we have subtracted this length here so this distance is you have 20 minus you have this 20 minus 2x over here so this is 20 you subtract 2x you have this distance or length of your box now if you turn that up it will look like this now this length will be equal to we have here 20 minus 2x then this height of course that is x then this also will be 20 minus 2x now the volume of this box is equal to your length times width times height so the volume is equal to you have the length you have 20 minus 2x you have the width as 20 minus 2x and you have this height which is x now we just We have this 20 times 20, so this is 400. So we have here 20 times 2. So we distribute this. You have 400 minus you have 80x plus you have 4x squared times you have x. So you have volume is equal to you have 400x. Minus, we have 80 
x squared plus 4x cubed. So we have this equation here. So you have your dv, derivative of volume, that is equal to you have 400 dx minus, so you have 80, the power formula. So you have 2x, so 2 minus 1, so exponent 1, so that is 2x dx plus, you have 4, we have 3x squared dx. So dividing both sides by dx or with respect to x na tayo, you have dv with respect to x equals, so you have 400 Minus, we have 80 times 2, so that is 160x plus, we have 12x squared. Then, to maximize or minimize, you let dv with respect to x is 0. So, you have differential of v with respect to x is 0 for max or min. So, you have 400 minus 160x plus 12x squared equals 0. So you can solve this using your quadratic formula or perhaps you can use your calculator here. We have your mode equation, so 5. So for quadratic equation, you have here 3. So just input all the coefficient. For second degree, you have 12. That's equal. So for first degree, you have negative 160. So for constant, you have 400 equals, you have x as 10, then you have x as 3.33 or you have 10 over 3. So if you analyze this, if x is 10, I mean you, if x is 10, you have 20 minus 2 times 10 so you cannot have a width of 0 okay you cannot have a width or length as 0 it means that you have this x as 10 not possible so if your x is 10 we have 20 minus 2 times 10 so that is 0 so it means that it's not applicable 10 is not applicable you have this as your value for x so that is 3.33 or now we go back to our original equation here. So volume equals so 400x minus 80x squared plus 4x cubed. So we just substitute. You have V equals, you have 400 times, you have 10 over 3. So minus 80x squared, so 10 over 3 squared plus 4 times 10 over 3 cubed. So we have V equals, so that is equal to, you have 592.59 cubic inches. So you just need to remember all the procedure. So step by step lang yung pag solve guys, then mga master nyo din yan. So that's it, I hope to see you in my next video.